We all know what it is, but do you know how to actually find it? What's going on everyone? Today we're talking about center of gravity. Now, what is a center of gravity? It's basically the balancing point of an object where the average of the weight of the items all come together to make one center point, the center of gravity. Now that can be applied to any type of object, but we often talk about it with RC vehicles, specifically rock crawlers and trail trucks, because it's something that we notice a lot and something that we oftentimes modify to try and make the truck perform better adding weight down low or moving items as low as possible to try and keep that center of gravity low along with it. The new Axial SCX-10 3CJ. Center of gravity was something that came up in the initial run video or you know, review video that I did of this because this vehicle looks fantastic. I really, really enjoy it. However, I don't really, really enjoy the driving characteristics because I feel that this suffers from a fairly high center of gravity. And that means that when you're on the trail driving around, it wants to either tip over completely or it's got a lot of roll and it's always a little bit unsettled rather than that super planted feeling. Now, there's lots and lots of things that go into the driving characteristics of a vehicle suspension tuning, spring rates, you know, actual suspension geometry, just the way that you have things placed within the chassis, but it all comes together to make one package. And oftentimes that center of gravity is something that you really feel the most. You've all probably done some variation of checking your center of gravity before. And that may just be by trying to like grab the truck and find that balance point where it doesn't want to tip more forward or more backwards when it's just balancing on your hand. And you may think that initially that's just the balance point, but what you're balancing your hand or a block or anything on is the center of gravity of the vehicle in one plane. Of course, the center is at an actual point somewhere in a three-dimensional space within the vehicle. But oftentimes we kind of look at it from one plane at a time. So when you've balanced it on your hand, you can draw a straight vertical line from that and your center of gravity is gonna be somewhere on that line. But an easier way and a little bit more precise way is to use a string or a cable, rope, whatever you have. Now, the benefits of this is that a string can't resist any sort of bending, force. It's called a moment in many places. When you have a lever arm and you put a force here, it creates a moment force back at a different place. And that's that rotational, uh, you know, resistance basically. And that's your, your moment. Now a string cannot do that. It can't do anything but tension. It can't do compression. It can't do bending, anything like that. Only tension, which is perfect for what we're after. Now, you can take a vehicle like this and basically just hook this up to any point on there. To start, we'll hang this from the front. Now, I've already done this with a number of vehicles. I'm gonna show you some illustrations of that. But what we're gonna do is we're basically going to hang it from one point, look at it from the side, and take a photo of it the easy way. And then we're going to remove that string and we're gonna put it in a different place. Some place considerably different generally helps. If you just take it from the tie rod and you put it up on the stinger, you know, you're gonna, you can still get it. You'll still be able to get the actual information, but it makes it a little bit harder to estimate because this is an estimation way unless you get some real specific type setups, but take it from the front and then the next time hang it from the rear. Now I've done that with this vehicle and several other ones behind me. And I've got photos of all of those situations to show you now. Before I show you the center of gravity of this video, I'm gonna put some options up here and you can guess where you think the center of gravity may be. So I'm gonna show you these points, pause the video, make your guess in the comments below. Don't cheat. So starting with the CJ first, I hung it first from the tie rod on the axle. Now, being that these aren't fixed at the ride height of the vehicle at you know a resting, it's gonna vary a little bit, but it's still gonna give us an approximation. So. First, I hooked it to the tie rod, and then I took the line of the string and I extended it in Adobe Illustrator to give me that first estimation. And then I turned it around and I hung it from the rear of the cage. And then again, I extended that line down. Now with both of those images, you can take and just visually kind of estimate where those two cross. And I've kind of determined it's right around here, right in the mid rear section of the door. And to me, that makes sense. And 
I'm gonna show you a few other options now to kind of show you the difference of where I feel like this center of gravity should be versus what this one estimated to be. The next one I grabbed is my class one truck. This was a custom truck made for competition, but it does have a forged carbon fiber hard body and a titanium cage, all of which do add weight. But with using the two lines that we're showing here, we can see that the center of gravity of this truck is right around the level of the rock slider. So, so very low and decently forward overall. The next truck is the new Stance RTR. This is a ready to run comp crawler. Now this one also uses a pretty small battery. I've got an 1100 milliamp battery in place in this. From the image where it's hanging from the front, you can see that the center of gravity is somewhere down at that skid plate level. Now, using the second image, we can see that we're crossing somewhere down around the front lower link mount location. And that's a very low center of gravity, but this would be expected from a competition oriented truck. Next, I grabbed my VS410 Woods Runner. Now this one's got a 1300 milliamp battery that's installed down low under the rocker panel on the driver's side. This does have a steel cage and a full 3D printed interior inside, but it has aluminum axles also. So again, by first looking at the image where it's hanging from the front, we can see that that line is pretty straight and just above the level of the rock sliders. And then from the second, we can see approximately where it's crossing over. And then from the second image, we can see that it crosses towards the middle front portion of the door. So just above the rock sliders, up towards the door. So now getting back to the CJ here. In comparison, we're seeing this one somewhere up in this area for the center of gravity, where the other trucks that we compared were down lower, down more towards the rock slider area, or even forward and lower when we're talking about a competition oriented truck. So we have a lot of distance between where our center of gravity is and ideally where we would love it to be. I would love this truck to perform like a comp truck, but look like this good looking CJ. So looking under the body of the CJ, we can kind of see here, What's to blame, so to speak, of the higher center of gravity? Now, I do still have the battery installed in here. This is a 3200 milliamp spectrum smart battery. It's not a huge pack, it's not a 5000, but it's larger than I would run in many cases. But if we really want to increase performance, what we should be doing is running one of those smaller battery packs on the side battery tray that is already provided. That's an easy fix. We can even remove the rear battery tray because it sits up higher than we would ideally want. So get rid of that, gives us a little bit more. But the biggest perpetrator of the high center of gravity, in my opinion, is this transmission setup in the SCX3. Primarily the position of the motor. It's all the way up here up front, sits next to the steering servo. Now, that's very high. So if we can take that motor position and somehow lower it, then we'll be in a better situation to have that more ideal center of gravity. All the other trucks that I demoed, those were all running a VFD transmission. Now, in comparison to the SCX3, it runs the motor down low at the skid plate level, basically, rather than up high where the SCX3 is. So a huge difference in overall motor height. My ideal situation will be to remove this SCX103 transmission and swap in a VFD. That's not a bolt-on modification, but something I think that we can handle and something that I definitely plan to do here in a separate video. The point of this video was just to give you that tool to be able to roughly estimate the position of the center of gravity of your vehicle, your truck, your race car, whatever it may, anything. It, you could do it for the center of gravity of your radio if you wanted. So there you go. That gives you an idea of center of gravity. Now, of course, there's tons of other ways that you can modify your vehicle to lower your center of gravity. Adding weight to the wheels lowers your center of gravity. Lowering the suspension overall lowers your center of gravity. And like I mentioned, there is a ton of attributes that go into really determining the driving characteristics of your vehicle. This is just one I would say one of the most important ones though. So I'm gonna be diving into trying to transform the driving characteristics of this truck in some future videos. If you're interested in seeing that, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. If this video helped you in any way, hit the like button. As always, appreciate you guys for watching. See you on the next one.